Welcome back to the Weekend Review. Now, IBC Commissioner Rosalina Combe resigned on Wednesday morning. Combe said she was quitting owing to what she called a partisan approach by some of her colleagues at the commission. Dr. Combe, who had left the country to oversee the presidential ballot printing exercise in Dubai, instead took a different flight to the United States from where she issued her resignation notice. Let's just listen in to some of the reactions to her resignation. All right, well, just as a, just that, that's an excerpt of uh, part of the statement that uh, she sent to newsrooms after she reached the U.S. But preparations as well for uh, next Thursday's repeat uh, presidential election have taken a major hit after uh, Akombe, a commissioner of the Electoral <coughs> Agency, resigned. Uh, Rosalind Akombe quit the commission in a statement from New York where she was based before she took the IBC job. Now, in that statement, she says repeat election as planned cannot meet the basic expectations of a credible election. She has accused commissioners of having become partisan and those who don't act on issues rather as based on merit. She has accused the commission of being part of the crisis even as she cited threats to her life as part of her reasons to quit into what uh, uh, both uh, Jubilee and uh, NASA had to say on that resignation. Sisi tunawambia wajipange. Tarehe 26 wa Kenya waje na wapige kura. Uhuru leo amesema ya kwamba tutakuwa na uchaguzi tarehe 26. Ninamweleza hana mamlaka hata kidogo. Hiyo anaweza kuelezea Ruto mwenzake lakini sisi wa Kenya Tunasema October, October. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter how much you demonstrate. It doesn't matter how many conditions you give. It doesn't matter how many resignations. We are ready and Kenya is ready for election on the 26th. Kuchaguzi ikiwa kama wezi ni watakua pali. Kuta kuenda kwa uchaguzi kama kiwanja hiko sawa. Tutangawa mbiba. The very people, the political leaders that are supposed to build a nation have become the greatest threat to the peace and stability of the nation. And so today, let me be very clear that I'm giving a yellow card to all the political leaders in this country. All right, and uh, those are some of the reactions coming in this week. Let me just get uh, some of the reactions from my panel in studio this morning. So this began with uh, a shocker, really, from uh, Rosalind Akombe on Wednesday morning, and it has spiraled uh, to a number of things. Let me begin with you, Pesari, so you know, the implications of that resignation. I, I think we saw this coming uh, as citizens. You know why? Um, when Chebukati wrote his memo, mm -hmm. and then they went on a retreat, and then there was, the memo was put aside and nobody talked about the memo again. You realize that there was powers outside of IBC that were controlling IBC. And now it's very clear that the commissioners are divided mm -hmm. and the majority within the commission are leaning towards doing what Jubilee wants. Now this is where I say the I in IBC is not existing, right. the independence. I look at Chebukati and I feel sorry for the man. He wants to do the right thing, but he's overpowered, he's overwhelmed. And now this explains the new electoral bill. I mean, the fact that the president has already signed it, it's probably going to be gazetted today, it's probably going to be law. And you know, all I want to say is, this is all wrong, mm -hmm. you know? And it's also wrong that- Do, do you have a confirmation that the president has indeed I mean, uh, Murade was on, on television saying the president has already signed it, uh -huh. yeah. you know? So, I mean, yeah, and, uh, and he also tells us, you know, the, he's, he's actually, you know, what, what we're seeing happening in the country right now mm -hmm. is it has been spoken by the Jubilee chairman. So if he's already speaking about the president has signed it, the president's going to be a dictator, this is what the, this country needs, a benevolent dictator, you know, I mean, these are the words that are coming from the chairman of Jubilee. So it shows the country where we're going to go or where we're headed. Mm -hmm. And I am so glad that we have have 
Raila Amolo Odinga in this country, a man that has fought for so much that we enjoy, you know, democracy, uh, multi party democracy, uh, freedom of uh, speech, freedom of media, freedom to demonstrate, you know. And these are things that he's not thinking, oh, when I become president, I can't uh, manipulate and abuse these things. Because he wants a country where we reason and we do what is right for everyone. Uh -huh. And, you know, I really pray that my brothers and sisters in Rift Valley and Central Kenya, the supporters of Jubilee, actually sit down and soul search and ask themselves, is it right to have an election that excludes everyone else? Even if one community is excluded and doesn't feel that this election can be free and uh -huh, fair, uh -huh. we should say no. Let us do this right because Kenya, you know, we keep saying peace, peace, peace. Kenya only one, we are one people. And then at the same time, we say, how are to? These stone throwers, these, you know. So for me, Raila, we cannot write off Raila's uh, contribution to Kenya. You know, we cannot. And for me, the fact that we have him trying to actually unite this country as a legacy that he wants to leave for all of us, I, I really pray that on the 26th, we, we do not vote. All right. Uh, let me hear from you, Getundu. Let me frame the question yes. uh, this way. Looking at uh, Rosalina Combe's uh, statement and uh, what she's been saying since uh, uh, she quit the job at IMBC, she said um, for as long as Shebukati only has two votes in that commission, he'll never get anything achieved. And uh, she also alluded to the fact that uh, the rest of the commissioners were very partisan. Um, Politically, if uh, the rest of the commissioners were partisan towards Raila Odinga, then NASA really would not have a problem with IBC uh, going through and uh, um, uh, really preparing for this election. In his speech yesterday, President Uhuru Kenyatta issued a very stern warning that those interfering with the working kings of the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission should stop uh, with immediate effect. What do you make then of uh, the public? Um, the public outlook right now of the IABC coupled with that statement by Rosina Kombe? Uh, I, I think to start uh, with the resignation, uh, for me it is uh, inconsequential. It, it was coming. Uh, we all saw it coming. The body language was uh, very clear. And she was, like William Shakespeare said, the world is a stage uh -huh. and everyone plays their role. So there was the, this script of uh, scattering the 2017 presidential election. And this was uh, conspired a long time ago. And it had its own stages, it had its own actors, it had its own timelines, and it had its own end game. And the end game was this, Nusumkate government. Oh, because on. there was no way, there was no way so long as the mathematics, the, uh, the, the electoral mathematics in Kenya uh, subsist, there was no way Raila would have won on the ballot. <laughs> we all know that. So the only way he could have access to the, to the government is through <coughs> an arrangement, a kind of arrangement uh, akin to that one of 2017. And the, everything is, is headed to, towards that way, but he will not succeed. That is the script. So Rosaline was just a part of that script, and she has played her role. That, that is to scatter elections. The good thing is that the good Lord will not allow anyone to interfere with our right. Remember, the holding of, of the fresh election of 2017 is a constitutional imperative, it is a legal imperative. The law is very clear. Six, we have to hold in fresh elections within 60 days of notification of presidential election. Secondly, there was a court order uh -huh. from the Supreme Court. So that is a legal imperative, and it is also a, a constitutional imperative. And we have no, by the way, we have no option. We have to hold the elections. If we don't hold the elections, what happens? Who will continue being the president till 2nd August? Of 2020. So do we assume yes. that the contents of the statement by Rosalind Akombe and the mm. contents of the statement followed after that mm. uh, by Chairperson Afula Chebukati should mm. just be ignored and Kenyans should move and have uh, this election? You know, what I find paradoxical about uh, this complaint about uh, the, 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 the numerical strength of this side or that side uh, uh, pertaining to the uh, IBC is the Supreme Court. You see, so it is okay for the majority, for the majority of uh, judges in the Supreme Court, to support NASA's narrative in court, but it is not okay for another commission to 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 to, to tend to uh, to, to side this way so or to do this way. A I don't think, I don't, this is democracy. Not right. You must no, no. You must. You can't have your cake and eat it. Our country. Remember Article 2 of the Constitution. It is it's very clear. Kenya, what is Kenya? Kenya is a, is a democratic, is a multi-party republic. So we, we are we're guided by democratic, democratic edicts. 
with that, with those pillars of democracy must be respected. If commission, the majority of commi commissioners feel that this is how we, this should, thing should be done, why should you have a, a, a problem with that? Yet we don't have a problem when a majority of the Supreme Court judges tend to side with you. You know, you cannot, okay, okay, either you believe in democracy or you believe in dictatorship. And for me, I do not believe in dictatorship. I believe in democracy. So if Chebukati wants something, something done, and maybe it, is, it does not deal well with the others, or is unable to convince them, that he cannot come out and, uh, and start complaining. The fact of the matter is, Chebukati either believes in democracy or he believes in dictatorship. Right. If he believes in dictatorship, then we have no <laughs> business having the commission. We only need to have one commissioner called the Chebukati, then he can uh, run around and do his bid. All right, so, yes. interesting point. Let me hear so, from you, yeah. Steve. And you know, uh, even as you continue, you know, where then is the democracy that Tagatun is talking please, about? If you look at the statement, uh, these commissioners say there are serious threats on their lives. Michelle, first of all, <laughs> Alex's ability to draw out reason effectively demoralizes me. I know. It's not open to us. This is a commissioner, the public face of the IBC. It's not open to us to downplay her resignation whimsically the way Alex is trying to do. Mm. If Akombe had resigned citing health issues, personal commitments, personal challenges, the, the commission would move on without much ado. Okay. When there's an African proverb that when an alligator comes out of the water and tells you the crocodile is unwell, shall you doubt it? Listen, Akombe, in her own statement, later on, but dressed by the chair, has accused IBC of being susceptible to external manipulation and more dangerously, because it, dangerously because I'm saying, she says that the commission has in problems that are internal to itself. The commission has partisan posturing. It is, you know, reinforcing certain arguments that are up, that are out there in, in the political space. In our constitutional, in our constitutional setup, unlike the U.S., where you inoculate politics in the commission, the electoral management body, in our system, we have a system of insulation. You have an independent office, then you have people who are independently co and competently recruited and are required to work dispassionately, objectively, and without pandering to any side. Uh -huh. When a commissioner impugns the integrity of the commission, does the credibility of that commission, I think is who himself issued a statement after that. That underscores the seriousness with which he appreciates this issue is not open to us to, to begin to doubt that. We may pontificate on the other reason extraneous to that resignation, but the fact is this, a textual analysis of her resignation, matching what Shebukati himself said, that is not prepared to be overruled again. Remember he said he's the only law in that commission. He has held positions before which have been overruled or outvoted in the plenary, which means because of collective responsibility, he's had to do things that he otherwise finds unacceptable or even outrightly illegal. Anyway, the thing is this. A combat resignation has both intended and unintended consequences. The intended consequences, <laughs> which I find beneficial, she's saying, listen, before you proceed with the election, and I've said Election date, there is no doubt about it, there's no debate about it, unless there's a further court order stalling the process of postponing it. If we don't agree to move to court to postpone the election date, the election will go on as a matter of uh, 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 legality. Mm -hmm. But the beneficial aspect I see from Akumbe's revelation is this. It requires now a more bipartisan discussion dialogue on how to harmonize the approach going to the election. It looks like they're losing it. The unintended consequence is that the court has already said that let justice be done even if heavens may fall. I see a Kumbes uh, statement, which is publicly shared, which matches Chebukati's statement, and her own memos, which have been leaked under ISO K10, also sharing them publicly. It means that the threshold for nullification of a presidential election has already, in my view, has effectively been closed. Do we want to go to an election whose credibility is significantly in doubt that is not to say, Professor, because I know that much is what you're saying, mm -hmm. that is not to say that we stop election arbitrarily. IBC has no powers to stop election. NASA has no powers to stop election. Neither does Jubilee. Only a court of law can interpret the Constitution harmoniously and purposively to be able to adjust the election date. But away from that, what we, what we see, Jubilee should be more concerned because they will have a greater challenge preserving the outcome of this election. Because this election now, with Raila out of the way, this election is for Uhuru Kenyatta to lose. Right. But you'll have a significant challenge. Remember, when the Supreme Court was nullifying the election, they said election is a question of process, and every process of the way must comply mm -hmm. with the law. IBC must maintain the, 
the perception that it cares about the rule of law, that is open in this transaction, that is imp an impeach that is conduct right, is unimpeachable. Right. I think so far where I stand, if we go to an election petition at the Supreme Court, the chances that the Supreme Court will nullify that election are probably very, All right, very I want you to high. hold it there because there's an interesting point on that one. But Dr. Mukwana, let's get your thoughts from this, uh, Akombe's resignation. Yeah, Michelle, I'm seated very far away, and I think you <laughs> are being left out yes, many please, times. Yes, your thoughts on this. <clears throat> First of all, I, I agree with my learned uh, uh, friend on the issue of the election date. I have said before that the election must be on, not because that's the only thing that the, 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 the law, the court ordered, but because it is part of the many ish things that were ordered. So yes, it must be on. Where I depart with my colleague is where he embarks on a textual interpretation of the law without looking at the realistic part of it. An election is both a legal process and a political process. What NASA has opted to do, rather than go to court again, they have opted to use the political so process. Mm -hmm. And that is why they have engaged in a political uh, uh, boycott. I have repeatedly said that what Raila has done is not necessarily withdrawal. It's an election boycott. And let's add that election boycotts are legitimate sources of addressing election problems world over. There are many examples. I've given examples here. So whereas our friends may say, why is he demonstrating? It is a legitimate political tool to use an election boycott to make sure that your points are heard. Number two, Akombe's resignation. Michelle, until Akombe resigned, I had personally said that IEBC is not independent. Mm -hmm. And my argument was based on the fact that the appointments were political, which is a fact. After Combe's resignation and Chebukati's address, which uh, Council Right Fred re referred to it as buttressing, as strengthening what Dr. Combe said, mm -hmm. there can be no doubt that what we were saying about IBC is correct. Akombe has not just resigned, she has given reasons. And she says, this IEBC, clearly now, it is four against three. With Akombe going, it is four against two. Mm -hmm. And you have no problem. And I agree with my brother when he says that it's democratic. If it's four, they carry the day. Right. The problem that I would have with if these four are not doing what is in compliance with the Constitution and the orders of the court. That's why we depart. I must also add this. Mm -hmm. We are going to an election. Believe you me, President Uhuru will win. Not because he may have the numbers, that's not for me to judge, but because the process is flawed. We must remember what the court found out. A hundred kims, it was alleged, were stolen before the election. Nobody knows where they operated from. It was upon IBC to ensure that these kims kits are accounted for. As we speak now, we were told that GPRS location for, the, for all the Kim's kids was switched off on the 5th. So we do not know whether that 8.2 million votes they're saying originated from a particular server. All we are saying is that as a lawyer, I would want a situation where the procedure as articulated and prescribed by the court is followed. If that is followed, whether Uhuru wins or Raila wins is not for us to judge. Let them campaign, but the playing field ought to be fair. The problem we have is that if you seem to agree with Raila's position, then you are labeled a Raila person, and vice versa. We must have some few men and women who say a wrong is a wrong, whether it is inflicted on Uhuru or it is inflicted on Raila. And in this case, I hold that the reason why this election ought to be discussed beforehand All right. is because it's going to divide the country along tribal lines. All right, I don't have very much time, so let's have a very brief closing comments on this. Um, in terms of solutions, really, what is the way forward? Not just for the country, but even for the IBC. Um, very briefly, uh, Pasaris, uh, the, uh, what is it? Uh, it's not a resignation. It is a step down. Uh, the stepping down of uh, Ezra Chiloba for three weeks is something that has uh, also come up uh, uh, this week. The others were saying that that move to step down uh, may have seemingly limited the court's ability to postpone uh, this election. Ezra Chiloba was uh, you know, pretty much marked as the face of impunity, mm, the face yes. of falsification uh, mm. within the commission. He has now stepped, uh, stepped aside. Would you then, how then would you, um, you know, put a factor that in, in the situation in the country? You see, we've, we've gotten to a place in Kenya where there is total mistrust. But the fact is, Ezra Chiloba didn't have to wait this long to leave the IBC. He knew right from the word go that one of the players, NASA, was not comfortable with him. But he wasn't the only one. Here we have a situation where, even when I look at the commissioners, you know, I, I think, uh, uh, you know, we pray as Kenyans, 
and we say we're God-fearing, mm -hmm. and it's in our constitution. It's the first thing in our opening statement that you know we are a country, and our national anthem is a prayer. But at the end of the day, when the wrath of God hits this country, we will only have ourselves to blame because you've been given a job. There is the temptation of money. There is the temptation of sticking to your own, supporting your own, protecting your own. I do not want anyone to protect Raila or to do anything for Raila that is contrary to law. I feel that, and they should neither do it for Uhuru that is contrary to law. We need to come to a point, whether you're a presiding officer, a returning officer, a voter, all right, or a commissioner, or a CEO of an organization that is serving the public from taxpayers' money. You have to start doing things the right way. And now, Maraga showed us the way. Akombe is next in showing us the way. That at the end of the day, we have to stand for what is right. And what is right is that the institution that is mandated to conduct an election has to conduct a free, fair, and credible election. Not for Jubilee supporters, not for NASA supporters, but for all Kenyans. And me, as a Kenyan voter, if I feel that the questions of my brothers and sisters on the other side are not answered, and I'm going to watch a tournament between two players, Jubilee and NASA, the referee seems to be biased and the grounds are not prepared properly. I would say, listen, I don't want to waste my time coming to watch this match, and the match is not going to go well. Mm -hmm. So I think Kenyans, we want peace. Let us be sincere. We cannot have peace if we cannot have a free, fair, and credible election. It's not about Mtuwetu. It's not about my tribe. It's about our country. One Kenya, one people. All right. Let us make sure that the IBC can deliver a free, credible election, and it cannot. And I feel this Nusum Kate thing, my brother here was saying that Raila wants Nusum Kate. I'm sorry. <coughs> Raila won the election on 8th of August. <laughs> if he didn't win the election, you should have just opened the servers and showed us otherwise. Raila won the election. Jubilee says Uhuru won the elections. Kenyans are left not knowing what is right and wrong. So for me, at the end of the day, Raila does not want Nusum Kate. He has won the elections in Kenya more than once. All right. All right. All right. So let let us have a free process where Kenyans votes can count. All right, gentlemen, we're out of time. So very very briefly, Alex, two seconds. Your closing comments. Uh, I think uh, all all the lanes are heading towards uh, fresh election on 26th of uh, October, and uh, I would kindly uh, and humbly urge all Kenyans to turn out in large numbers. It does not matter which uh, political leaning you have. Turn out in large numbers because it's a comp uh, it's, it's a constitutional imperative and also it's a, also uh, a judicial uh, legal imperative. Finally, at most important of all, remember Article the eight uh, of the Constitution of Kenya is very clear. You have political right. You have a right to vote, and you also have an equal right not to vote. Those people who decide to vote, please respect that right in as much as they are bound to respect your right not to vote. Mm -hmm. So if you do not want to vote, just stick to your home, stay at home or go to a pub, or just sleep. Those who want to vote, wake up early. I will wake up, God willing, at 4 a.m. to make sure that I exercise my right to vote under Article 38 of the Constitution of the Republic of Kenya. So let us respect each other's all right. right. Absolutely. Thank respect you. for all. Steve, very briefly, please. Um, I think there's a saying that no one knows the mind of man except the Lord himself. Uh -huh. So we, it's, not, it's not wise to pontificate on why Chiloba resigned or whatever, but we can, we can, we can analyze and deduce the intended consequences of that resignation. Effectively, that closes the discussion on postponement of the election. Uh -huh. If you look at it carefully, unless Chebukat himself goes to court, you know, again, in each case, this is the sharp person saying, I'm not ready. If he doesn't go to court, this Chebchiloba's resignation is a direct answer to Akombe's allegations. And, Chilo, and, and also, and, and also uh, Chebukat's uh, plea or, or directive that people step aside uh -huh. if they've been implicated. Uh -huh. Now, what it intends to do is this. Where the errors occur, and I, for me, I'm, I'm, in, I'm, I'm prepared to give reasonable assumption to the credibility of the process post Chiloba because the falsification on election day occurs at the polling station. The, this project team will be answerable, not Chiloba, will be answerable for any falsification happening quickly. And then number two, which, and also the last thing, is that if you look at the transmission of the results, the downloading, intercepting, downloading, editing, uploading, Chiloba won't be there. Right. Now, and that's something that only the people who are at the commission are entitled to answer to it. Right. I see people <coughs> moving to court to stop election. The court is likely to say, preserve all these concerns for post-election dispute resolution mechanisms. All right, that's a conversation for another day. Dr. Mkona, very briefly, please, your closing comments. Uh, for me, if anybody doubted that there's a problem in IBC, 
uh, Combe's resignation should have done okay. and settled those side. Right. Yeah. Chebukati has said he's not capable of delivering a free and fair election. Why would a person who is not in charge of the election process say, we are okay, let's proceed? For me, to tell people that those who want to vote, let them go. Those who don't want to vote, let them not go. It's not right because an election is not a personal thing. An election is a national exercise. And they, those who don't want to vote are entitled to have the process right before we participate. You cannot say, just stay home and we do. Because when you get that presidency after the election, you'd be ruling over us right. and determining the resources that go to all the country, not just your supporters. All right. So as Thank it you. sounds, I think the clarion call is everybody respect everybody's decision. If you want to vote, go out and vote. If you don't, let's just maintain peace, calm, and unity uh, in the country. Thank you very much. That was the week in review in the studio. We had uh, advocates uh, Steve Ogola, Alex Gatundu, and uh, Dr. Alutalala Mukwana, as well as our uh, honorable Esther Pasaris, who is in a row be women representative that has been the weekend review let's take a short commercial break here on uh, weekend express when we come back we'll take a look at news making headlines across the borders